All right, welcome to the first episode of the tutorial series for Fabric 118.1. In this first episode, we're going to be setting up the entire workspace so that you can start modding with Fabric for 118.1. But first, why don't you check out my Minecraft Modding 118 course for Fabric over on Udemy or Skillshare. The course contains 11 hours of modding tutorials, from the very beginning all the way to the advanced stuff like block entities and even world generation. Some additional and exclusive topics will also be added over the coming weeks and months. Look at the first two links in the description. You can either get the Udemy course for over 50% off or on Skillshare you can get one month free trial and access to mine as well as thousands of other classes. Right, now after we've gotten that out of the way, let's start with this tutorial. So the first thing that you're going to need is a JDK or Java Development Kit. Now I highly recommend using the one from Adoptium that is OpenJDK. Make sure that you choose Tamarin 17 then just click on latest download. It should detect your operating system automatically. And then if you're on Windows, you can just install this onto your PC like any other program. When you install it, make sure that you have set Java home variable set to will be installed on local hard drive. This is actually very important. So make sure that you select this as well. After installing the JDK, we're also gonna need an IDE that is an integrated development environment. You can think of this as a fancy text editor that basically allows you to write code. And we're gonna use IntelliJ IDEA for this. You can choose the community version, which is free. So you don't have to pay anything. Link is of course also in the description below. So everything here is linked. So you just download this and once again, just install this like any other program onto your PC. And we're gonna start IntelliJ for the first time in just a moment. The next thing is not something to download, but actually something to basically study and learn. And that is gonna be Java knowledge. Java is not optional when you want to learn Minecraft modding. I highly recommend taking a look at, for example, my Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding, which is gonna introduce you to some of the basics in Java. I highly recommend checking it out because it can only help you if you really wanna make a serious mod. You have to know Java, otherwise you cannot do it. But there's something else we need and that is the Fabric example mod right here. So you can see that we can choose different versions. This is 118 in this case. You know, if future versions come out, you can basically select the different branches and then get that. So there's two ways that we can do this. We can either use this template right here and immediately make a GitHub repository, or what we can do is we can download this. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to download this and we're gonna set up GitHub at the end of this video. So I'm gonna download this as a zip and I've already prepared this here in my folder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna extract this here and I'm gonna rename this to Fabric Tutorial one one. The zip file we no longer need and then we can go in here. Now there's a few things that we can delete. There's going to be the license and the readme file as well as the .github folder. The rest has to be kept as is and now we can start IntelliJ for the first time. Your IntelliJ window is definitely going to look different than mine, especially if you've you know, open it for the first time. However, the three buttons, the new project, open and get from VCS button, those should still be available to you. And what we're gonna choose is the open button. Then we're just gonna get the directory right here and put it into here. So I just copied it over and we're gonna make sure that we choose this folder, the folder right here. So we're gonna click OK. I'm gonna say trust project and then a new window here will open and things will start happening in the background. Just leave them be, it's gonna be totally fine. So just employ a little bit of patience here. Just wait for a couple of seconds. Sometimes it takes a minute or so, and then we can proceed afterwards. All right, so for example, you can see I am getting an error here that is totally fine. This is not nothing to worry about at all. So for example, you're using an outdated version of Java. Okay, how can we fix this? Well, we'll have to go through some steps anyway. So first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go to File, Project Structure, you're going to make sure that the project SDK right here is set to 17. And then the project level language is also set to 17. We're going to hit apply and OK. The next thing we have to do is we're going to go to file settings, build execution deployment, build tools, Gradle, and making sure that the Gradle JVM here is set to project SDK. That is also very important. Once that is done, we should actually be fine and a little elephant here in the top right corner should appear. If this is not the case, you can always open the Gradle tab and click on this Reload All Gradle Projects button. Once again, employ some patience and just wait until this has run through. All right, and you can see I have gotten a build successful right here. That is great. If you did get a build failed, no worries. Once again, first of all, go through the steps that we've gone through, project structure and the settings. Make sure that both of those things are set up correctly. This is incredibly important. This has to happen. And now we can start changing some stuff. 
So first of all, we're going to open the source folder and then we're going to open the Java folder. And you can see that, well, this is sort of the layout of our packages. And what's very important is that if IntelliJ was open for the first time, what it might look to you is something like this, right? Where it's net.fabricmc.example. I highly recommend going to this little gear here, making sure that both flatten packages as well as compact middle packages is turned off. Then it's going to look exactly the same for you as it does for me. Right, next thing we want to go into the grail.properties file and maybe change a few things right here. You're of course watching this in the future, so newer Minecraft, Yarn or loader versions might be out. Now for this, the Yarn version, we actually have one that is further down the line, which is going to be 0.12 right here. And we also have a new fabric version out and that is going to be 45 actually, there you go. You can check this at fabric.net slash versions HTML right here. So you can basically see all of the different things that we have. And usually if you want to update your mappings, you can also use this command right here. So that would also work as well. Otherwise, I've just made this manually. So once again, click the little elephant in the top right corner. If you change stuff in the Gradle properties or the build.gradle file, the elephant should appear automatically. There you go, another build successful, isn't that great? Okay, and then we basically continue with some mod properties. Now the mod properties are particular to our mod. So our mod version, well, I'm just gonna call it 0.01-1181. So I usually include the actual Minecraft version in the version as well, just so that it's a little bit easier for the user to see. Then the Maven group here is gonna be representative of our package structure that we're gonna set up in just a moment. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this net.kaupenjo. For you, this would be net and then your name or your online name, either one would work fine. The archive base name, I'm just gonna call this the tutorial mod this is going to be our mod ID in just a moment, but I'm going to explain a little bit more about that in just a little bit. This will be our mod ID in just a moment. So let's actually open the resources folder and we are going to be greeted with two different JSON files here. The fabric mod JSON and the mod ID mixin JSON. First of all, let's go into the fabric mod JSON and just change a bunch of things. So you can see at the very top, the ID here, mod ID. So this will be tutorial mod. Now it's incredibly important. This is a very important thing for the mod ID. It can only contain lowercase characters, underscore, dash, and numbers. No uppercase characters and no spaces and no other special characters. This is the only thing that it can contain. Highly recommend just using lowercase characters. The mod ID is a unique identifier for your mod. So make sure that it is unique. However, you have to follow the constraints. That is very important. This is, of course, the tutorial mod. And the author is Kaumjo. We'll keep the contact for the time being. This is not too important at the moment to set this up. The license, however, is that's going to be MIT. And then this one is very important right here. This is the entry points. So this is going to be, well, the folder structure and then pointing to your main mod class. So you can see that this currently points to example mod. We're going to change this to net Kaupenjo tutorial mod, tutorial mod. Exactly written like this. Here we want to change mod ID to tutorial mod as well. So changing our mod ID here and the rest is going to be fine. We also want to open the mod ID mixins JSON and changing the packages here to Kaupenjo tutorial mod mix. The example mixin right here is going to stay for the time being. And then what we also want to do is we want to rename this. So right click, refactor, rename, and then change mod ID, well, to our mod ID, which is tutorial mod. Making sure that we have tutorial mod dot mixins dot JSON. Click on refactor and it should rename itself. Right, the JSON files are now set up so we can close all of this and we can proceed to open the example mod class right here. Now here we also want to change a few things. Namely, we want to go to the package and basically change this to net your name, in my case, mod. Now, of course, you're going to get an error. You can hover over this and then move to package and then exactly to your package. You can see that new stuff will be added here. And then the only other thing that we need to do is we need to take the mixin package right here and also move it to the tutorial mod package. We're going to say refactor. And then we can delete fabric MC in this case. 
and then we will be fine. Right, we might get an error in the example mixin. For the time being, we're going to ignore this because what we want to do is we want to click on the example mod, press Shift F6, and then re rename this to Tutorial Mod. There you go. And now we can go into the example mixin. Instead of having the example mod right here, what we're going to do is we're going to have Tutorial Mod right here. We might also have to delete the import right here but that's no worries at all then all of the errors should go away and everything should be fine this is actually all that we need to do to set up the entire workspace here so we're going to click the little elephant one more time just to make sure build successful that is great right and that's one more thing that we need to do in the terminal put in dot slash gradle w gen sources this is very important because this will basically generate the sources for minecraft so let's just do this and once again this might take you know, a minute or so, depending on how fast your PC is. So once again, just employ a little bit of patience and just wait until this has run through. And there you go, almost a minute it took for me. But like I said, if it takes a little longer for you, that's totally fine. Just wait until you get a build successful here. And what this basically allows us to do is to go into the external libraries and then under this one right here, net Minecraft, Minecraft project, mapped, yada, yada, yada. So all of this stuff, we can open this and not only do we have access to all of the assets, this means we have, can look at the textures, we can look at the JSON files, all of that. No, we can also look at the actual source code from Minecraft itself. So for example, if you ever wondered, wait, like how does an anvil block work? Well, you can simply open it and you can go through this. Now, what you might have is this blue line right here. What you should do is you should go to choose sources and make sure that you choose the mapped sources right here, say, okay. And then it should, in theory, reload. And now all of the things that we open here should be, well, without the blue line, so that we basically have the proper exact code that we actually want to take a look at. So that is amazing and really freaking cool. Right now, this is actually all that we need to do for, well, to set up the workspace in itself. So let's just start it. So to start Minecraft for the first time, we once again go to the Gradle tab, open this up, go to Tasks, Fabric, and double click on run client. Now what this will do is it will put the run client into the run configuration here. So in future, we can just press the start button and it will basically start the client right from there. Starting for the first time might take a little longer than usual. Also, this error right here is totally normal. You should not be alarmed by this. This is simply because we are not logged into any Minecraft account because during the development environment, we can't be logged in basically. And here you go, you can already hear it. I'm immediately going to turn down the music and the volume. So Minecraft has started successfully with Fabric, as you can see. So everything here working great. So if you've gotten to this point, congratulations, you've started Minecraft modding with Fabric. And it's going to be an awesome and great journey. I just, it's going to be really freaking cool. Right, so I highly recommend sticking around for the next step. Because in the next step, we're basically going to set up the GitHub repository. For this, you are going to need a GitHub account. I highly recommend just making one. It is a very reputable site, so no worries there. It is a great place to basically save your progress for your mod. It's just a very smart idea, all things considered. So really do do this. Right, so how are we going to set this up? Well, we're going to go to VCS and then share project on GitHub. Now this is after you have already have an account. So you can see this is what the name of the repository will be, Fabric Tutorial 1181. I'm fine with this. I'm personally going to choose to make this private for the time being. If you want to share this, for example, you can make this public. So this would be sharing it, for example, if you have an issue or something like that, you should make it public or also you can just share it. Usually that is also a really cool thing. Now you can see I don't have an account just yet, so I have to click Add Account and I'm going to say Login via GitHub. Now this is going to open the JetBrains site right here and I can just say Authorize in GitHub. And because I'm already logged into GitHub, I've successfully authorized. And now right here, github.com slash countmanjo. So it is basically my name right here. And I can basically just share it. So I can click share. And then you will see this, add files for initial commit. So this is going to be fine. You need all of those files. That's very important, like the build.gradle file and stuff like that. Because if other people, well, basically try your mod, they need to have the exact same specifications and the exact same settings as you. This is why, well, all of this is basically needed. So we're going to say add. And then you can see pushing to GitHub. And now I already have a GitHub repository. And this GitHub repository will also be available to you for the ongoing tutorials. So all of the code will always be available to you. 
for you to basically double check, copy over and stuff like that. Now, if you made any changes, so for example, I'm just gonna, you know, get rid of those comments right here, then you can see that the file where the changes happen is gonna turn blue. What I have to do is I have to go to this commit right here and I have to check all of the changes that I wanna commit. I could just say deleted comments, right? So I'm just gonna make it a little bit of a comment here of what I've done. I'm gonna hit commit. Now what might happen is that it's going to say, oh, you have 86 warnings. Are you really sure you want to commit? Usually we do want to commit. So we just click it again and then one file committed or X files committed. Now this does not mean that they are on GitHub yet because what you need to do is you need to go to this arrow that's pointing to the top right corner called push. You click this and then you say push. Now we're pushing the changes and you can see push one commit to origin master. So now if I reload this website, you can see 31 seconds ago deleted comments. So that is the basic gist of setting up a GitHub repository as well. And that would already conclude this first tutorial for the Fabric 181 series. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you run into any issues, feel free to leave me a comment and I'll try to help you best I can. Otherwise, I will see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.